It's a recap. 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 It's Italy in the 17th century, even though everyone is speaking French. And young Benedetta Carlini is a deeply devout youngster with Jesus in her heart. In fact, the entire Carlini clan are extremely religious, and they're on their way to a convent to drop young Benedetta off for the next 25 years, give or take. But because the Carlinis can't go more than an hour without praising the Lord, they stop at a roadside altar to praise the Lord. And while Benedetta is singing her heart out, a band of ruffians on horseback approach. The bad guys steal a necklace from Benedetta's mother, and it seems like things are about to get ugly. Thankfully, Benedetta is a thug. She demands the ruffians return the necklace at once, if they know what's good for them. Seconds later, a bird makes a beeline for the ruffian and poops directly in his eye. He immediately pulls out his sword, kills both of Benedetta's parents, and abducts her. I'm just kidding. He returns the necklace and then everyone laughs like they're in a f***ing Mentos commercial. Mentos, the fresh maker. Not long after, the Carlinis arrive at the convent, and Benedetta's father has a chat with Felicita, the reverend mother of the convent. The two haggle over the amount of Benedetta's dowry. You know, because Jesus is Benedetta's new husband. And well, the two come to an agreement, and Benedetta becomes the convent's newest bride for Christ. Now, this movie is very vague about the passage of time, which means I have no idea how long anything takes. But there are a few notable things that happen when Benedetta first arrives. One is she meets Sister Jacoby, a nun with a wooden finger who despises her own body and wishes it was made entirely of wood, like Pinocchio, in reverse. We're also shown Benedetta's Virgin Mary statue, a whole wholesome present given to her by her mother. Remember that. But the most notable thing that happens is Benedetta's first miracle. One night, Benedetta sneaks out of her cell to pray to the humongous Virgin Mary statue in the hallway. While she's praying, the bottom of the statue partially breaks, and the whole thing falls on top of her. But because of the weird way in which it broke, it doesn't crush her. But what does happen is Mary's breast ends up very close to Benedetta's mouth. So she does what anyone would do in that situation. Sucking on my titties. What the fuck is going on in here on this day? It's 18 years later and Benedetta is however old she is, and she and the sisters are performing in a play. Benedetta, of course, is playing her fave, the Virgin Mary. That my best friend. And during the play, Benedetta has her first vision of Jesus. He's chilling with a flock of sheep and calls out to her. After the play, there's a dinner reception, paid for by Benedetta's parents, who came to watch her performance. Aww. Also at the reception is this guy the provost, AKA the church admin guy. He's not important now, but he will be later. Just remember, he's ambitious and power hungry, but pretending that he's not ambitious or power hungry. After dinner, a strange young woman bursts through the convent's front doors, followed by a flock of sheep, and the sheep are followed by a man, a very angry man. The woman, Bartholomew, who I will be referring to as a Bart for the rest of this video, begs the Reverend Mother to let her in, because she totally loves God, and not because there's an angry man chasing her. Felicita asks the woman if she has any money, because unfortunately, the woman has no money, and Felicita tells her, It's above me. Sorry. I got my the best car. restaurant is next door. Turns out the angry man is the woman's father, and let's just say he is one nasty son of a he immediately starts pummeling his daughter, and the kind-hearted Benedetta begs her father to pay for the woman's dowry, which he really doesn't want to do. But the Reverend Mother reminds him how difficult it is for a rich man to get into heaven, but I guess pocket-watching Jesus is just fine. Anywho, her dad pays and Bart, joins the convent. We then learn Bart's tragic backstory. A year ago, her mother died of the plague. That's right, the plague. Remember that. After Bart's mom died, her father decided that Bart would be his new wife. You sick son of a bitch. He also likes to f animals. A bum. That's what he is. A bum. Bart and Benedetta get really close really quickly. Like when Bart is showering for the first time and Benedetta catches an eyeful and almost a handful of Bart's. Titty. They also share an almost intimate moment while using the communal toilet together. That's right, the communal toilet. Threw up in my mouth a little bit. In fact, they're interrupted by Christina, another sister who happens to be the daughter of the Reverend Mother. Christina and Benedetta don't really like each other 
each other very much. It's never explained why, and honestly, I think it was just a plot device. Also, it's worth noting, Bart has a hypersexuality about her. I don't know if it was purposeful due to her past, or if she just really likes Benedetta. She even kisses Benedetta the first night she's there. As the days or weeks go by, Bart becomes more obsessed with f***ing Benedetta. One day at Nun singing practice, Bart comes up behind Benedetta and, uh, lends her a helping hand, an aggressive helping hand. The helping hand causes Benedetta to have a vision. And in this one, she's being viciously attacked by a bunch of snakes that were created using the same CGI as the original Anaconda. Of course, our boy Jesus pulls up and saves her because that's just what he do. He then kisses her. Benedetta rushes to confession and tells the priest she's been seeing Jesus. The priest doesn't seem to really believe her, but he does tell her that suffering is the only thing that brings people closer to Jesus. Some undetermined amount of time later, the sisters are threading bobbins of silk. I assume that's how the convent makes money. Well, that and extorting wealthy families with weird daughters. Anywho, Bart and Christina bump into each other. It's clearly an accident, but Benedetta sides with Christina, even though no asked her. She demands that Bart stick her hand in a boiling pot of water to fetch the bobbins, and if she refuses, Benedetta threatens to send her back to her father. Bart, of course, does it and badly burns herself. When word gets back to the Reverend Mother, she asks Benedetta what made her do such a terrible thing to Bart. Benedetta explains that suffering brings people closer to Jesus, and she was just trying to bring Bart closer to Jesus, obviously. Felicita punishes Benedetta by making her change Sister Jacoby's sheets for two weeks, and the reason that's a punishment is because Sister Jacoby self-harms, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. The next night, or morning, Benedetta wakes up the convent by screaming at the top of her lungs in pain. They call a doctor who examines her and finds nothing wrong. Well, except a little black bile in her urine. They're forced to tie Benedetta to her bed, and Bart takes full advantage of Benedetta being tied to her bed. And even though Bart should be livid at Benedetta, she's not, and she kisses her again. You know what that means. Benedetta's being hunted by a group of ruffians who beat the hell out of her and are about to sexually assault her when our boy Jesus pops up and savagely murders everyone. Except it's not our boy Jesus, it's another ruffian who also tries to sexually assault her. And just as he's slicing off her, Titty. she wakes up. At this point, the Reverend Mother seems to be somewhat worried about Benedetta, but also kind of thinks she might be full of shit. She assigns another nun to watch over her, and you'll never guess who gets that assignment. Hello, Bart. Bart moves in to Benedetta's cell, and while she's getting settled, she she stumbles upon Benedetta's Virgin Mary statue. Soon after, Benedetta has yet another vision. In this one, Jesus is on the cross, but for some reason, he wants Benedetta to take her clothes off. He then tells her to take off his little loincloth. She does, and he has a vagina. Benedetta then touches his wounded hands and begins screaming. And when she awakens, she has the stigmata, the same bleeding wounds Jesus sustained during his crucifixion. Now, most of the sisters accept this as a miracle, but if you'll recall, Christina doesn't like Benedetta and is skeptical with a capital S. The Reverend Mother is also skeptical, but her skepticism is more low key than Christina's. Remember this guy, the provost? Ambitious and power hungry, but pretending he's not? Well, he pops up to investigate Benedetta's stigmata, and it looks real enough to him. But the Reverend Mother notices that Benedetta doesn't have a wound on her forehead, which would have been caused by Jesus's crown of thorns. Felicita and the provost have a private meeting, in which she expresses her doubts about Benedetta's stigmata. But remember, the provost is ambitious and power hungry, and a stigmata just might put their little city on the map, and in the process, put him in line for an archbishopship. Coincidentally, while they're chatting about Benedetta, Benedetta is in the hallway praying to her favorite girl. And wouldn't you know, 
her forehead starts bleeding. While everyone's freaking out, Christina notices a piece of glass on the floor. Wow, how convenient is fucking that? Then Benedetta starts yelling at everybody in the exorcist voice. You know the exorcist voice. You keep it away. My theory is that none of the characters can actually hear the exorcist voice. I think it's just for the audience. Felicita now realizes Benedetta is obviously full of shit, but the provost is 100% on board with Benedetta's stigmata because it's good for him. He even threatens Felicita's position as Reverend Mother when she doesn't enthusiastically hop on board. Needless to say, our girl Felicita is stressed and her daughter is about to make it a whole lot worse because Christina will not let it go. She saw the glass on the floor. She knows Benedetta must have cut herself. Meanwhile, Bard and Benedetta are getting even closer. One night, they have a little titty play. The next day or month, the provost announces Benedetta's stigmata to everyone, and he names Benedetta the new reverend mother of the convent. Excuse me? I have to say, Felicita takes it like a champ. I mean, she's plotting to take Benedetta down, but she's still taking it like a champ. Oh, and remember Sister Jacoby? She's dying, presumably from her wounds getting infected. Felicita wants to stay with her, and Benedetta thinks that's a great idea. Of course, if Sister Jacoby's not dead by evening prayer, Felicita will still be expected to attend evening prayer. You raggedy bitch. Sister Jacoby dies immediately after Felicita leaves for evening prayer because because of course she does. Meanwhile, Benedetta and Bart have moved into Felicita's old room, which compared to their old cell is like a five-star hotel suite, which they take full advantage of by finally having sex. Meanwhile, poor Christina is still pressed about Benedetta's stigmata. So she confesses to the priest that the stigmata is fake. Naturally, the priest makes Christina stand up in front of everyone and repeat what she told him. Whoa, 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 whoa. I might not be Catholic, but I'm pretty sure that's not how confession is supposed to work. But Christina does it. She tells everyone that not only did she see Benedetta cut herself, but she told her mother that she saw Benedetta cut herself. Now, I'm going to preemptively defend Felicita because Christina did not tell her that. You can probably guess what happens next. Felicita tells the truth. Now, even though Christina is by far the dumbest character in this movie, I do feel bad for her because she's just trying to do the right thing. Not to mention, she is far more courageous than her mother. Anywho, Benedetta yells in her exorcist voice that only we can hear for some reason, and as punishment for lying, Christina is made to self-flagellate. Also, while she's whipping herself, Benedetta and Bart get aroused. All y'all going to hell. Back at the suite, Bart, being the creative soul that she is, crafted Benedetta's Virgin Mary statue into a sex toy and proceeds to use it on her. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but before Felicita moved out of her suite, she carved a spy hole in the wall, presumably because she suspected Benedetta and Bart were and now she knows they are. Some undetermined amount of time later, the sky turns red. Everyone rushes outside to gawk at the comet because back then a comet appearing was a very bad omen. And sure enough, Christina walks out on the roof and jumps. Benedetta, who at this point is just a terrible person but somehow doesn't know she's a terrible person, offers to pray for Christina's soul. You know, because the whole suicides go to hell thing. And Felicita flips out on her. Get her Jay. Another undetermined amount of time later, we see Felicita sneaking off in a carriage. Turns out she's heading to Florence to snitch on Benedetta to the local archbishop. It's important to note that in Florence, the plague is raging. Felicita tells the archbishop everything, and he agrees to come with her to the convent, but not before we're treated to the sight of his mistress squirting milk out of her lactating breast. Why? Felicita and the Archbishop arrive at the city gates, but the guards are under Benedetta's orders not to let them in because of the plague. The Archbishop enters the city anyway, and he and Felicita learn that Benedetta died the day before. Bullshit. And when the Archbishop goes to inspect her body, she miraculously wakes up. The Bishop doesn't believe Benedetta even a little. He calls for a trial, and if she's found guilty, she'll be burned at the stake. It's about damn time. His men also torture Bart until she confesses confesses to their affair, which is all the proof he needs. Benedetta's found guilty, but you know our girl has a plan. Meanwhile, Felicita has fallen ill with the plague, but the bishop is keeping it hush-hush because he doesn't want people to know he brought the plague into the city. Also, 
he has it too. Benedetta, who's essentially on death row at this point, asks to visit Felicita, and the bishop lets her because why not? They have a nice little chat, and Benedetta assures Felicita that Christina is awaiting her on the other side. The thing is, there's something about facing inevitable and imminent death that makes people want to believe, and the dying Felicita wants to believe in Benedetta. So, she does. At this point, the entire city is pretty much on Benedetta's side. They believe her stigmata is real and that Jesus speaks to her. So when she tells them that if she dies, the plague will ravage the city, and when she shows them proof in the form of Felicita's plague-written body, they believe her. The people of the city revolt and save Benedetta from the burning stake. They also kill the archbishop because why not? And then, in my least favorite part of the movie, my girl Felicita walks into the burning stake. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but the bishop did let Bart go after torturing her. So she pops up and whisks Benedetta off to the countryside, away from all the chaos and killing. The next morning, Benedetta tells Bart she has to go back to the convent. Bart warns her that she'll be burned at the stake if she goes back. Also, Bart is very much aware that Benedetta Benedetta is full of shit about everything, but she loves her anyway. But Benedetta only loves Jesus, so she goes back. Then we get a written epilogue that tells us what happened. And no, Benedetta didn't get burned at the stake, but she did spend the rest of her life imprisoned in the convent and basically treated like shit, which seems fair. Also, the plague spared the city. So it was totally worth it. That is it for the recap. And just for a little context, Benedetta is kind of a true story. The film is very loosely based on the novel A Modest Axe, The Life of a Lesbian Nun in Renaissance Italy, written by Judith Brown. And the film is a super sensationalized version of her life. So if you want a more accurate version, I'll link the book in the description. And don't forget to let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this film. And if you enjoy recaps like this, I am starting a second channel called Ridiculous Recaps, where it will be nothing but ridiculous recaps, and I'll be recapping all kinds of movies and television shows. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.